coloring friends welcome back to my channel and welcome to a very special earth day episode of coloring outside the book uh first off i'd like to apologize for my voice if it sounds a little scratchy i am fighting a bit of a cold so i am sorry for that if that is irritating to anyone uh but i did want to get this out for earth day so for this video i have always celebrated earth day with my family by uh, either doing something outside planting wise or um, we've gone and picked up trash at a park before for Earth Day. Um, and then often with my kids, we've made uh, something recycled using things we already had in our own home to make them useful in a different way. Um, now, I have always, always loved a fresh brand new box of crayons. And when you love fresh brand new boxes of crayons <laughs> and then you save them after they get old, uh, you end up with a giant bucket of old crayons. So I have a, this is a popcorn bucket here and it is full of all of the crayons over the years that I have um, acquired. Now this is not just me buying boxes and boxes of crayons. This is probably my entire lifetime of crayons because I took the ones my mom had from, um, you know, the leftover broken crayons you end up with at the end of the school year. Uh, I took a bag that was in my grandparents' closet that we used to color with there, and they are in here. And then boxes of my kids' crayons at the end of the school year that they come home with that are old and broken, um, they've gone in here too. So... However, I don't just let them sit in there. Um, I started with my daughter's preschool class um, making crayons. So we made these heart crayons um, and then attached them to a card. And that was the Valentine's that she took to her class when she was in preschool. And then once she went to, I think I even did it for her kindergarten class. Uh, but then once she was kind of over that and wanted to choose her own, I was a preschool teacher and I was making these for my own kids in my preschool class. Um, so I would make up batches of those and I'll put a picture up. I think I took a picture of them all assembled one year uh, or maybe just all the different hearts I made. Um, but I have, you know, taken these and turned them into something a little more fun and usable. So I thought for this coloring outside the book that that's what we'd do. I would show how I make these heart crayons, how you can make your own crayons from old unusable ones into something more fun. <coughs> Excuse me. And, um, and then once we have our crayons all made, let me move that aside for a minute. I thought I'd do a little coloring in this Dr. Seuss coloring book. And of course, what better page for Earth Day than, let's see if I can get it, the Lorax. And this page even says, I am the Lorax. I speak for the trees. I love this page with all the truffle trees. And um, I thought that would be a fun one to kind of use my crayons a little bit in. I'll probably also use pencils or something else, but. Um, just maybe the word, the letters here, because they're nice and big. That is one caveat of the homemade crayons is they're not always the best for any kind of detail coloring. They're really better for um, like a preschool age where they just want to, you know, color, color to their heart's content on a piece of paper. But we're going to try it out today. So what you need if you're going to make your own crayons is a silicone mold and you want to make sure that it says it's oven safe. I don't know if they make silicone molds that are not oven safe, but just in case, make sure it's oven safe. We, we will use a low temperature, so um, it's kind of a low and slow melting process. Um, so that's, they, they hold up pretty well in there. I actually had to get rid of the mold that I used to make these because it had started to crack. I've used it so many times. Um, and then, of course, you need a mix of crayons. So you could either buy a fresh box and break them up and make them your own. Or uh, if you happen to have a, 
an assortment of old unwanted crayons from past school years. That Those work great for this. All right, so I'm going to get all set up here and I will start showing you the process. Okay, so I've got my setup here. And what I've done is I've just pulled out some colors and grouped them in different color categories. So I have a blue pile here, a purple, and a green. Um, so I'm going to make a blue, purple, and green crayon. Um, and you want to, if you can, it it turns out a little cooler if you uh, if you vary the tones that you're choosing for that crayon. So you see I have a darker blue and then I have this robin's egg blue here. Um, and then I have some turquoise and um, for the greens I went from a very light green to a uh, just a straight green and then we've got a yellowish green in there too. And then same goes with the purples. And I have a white pulled here because it's nice to, I like to break up a little bit of white and throw a few pieces of it into the uh, mold as well. Um, it gives you that swirly pretty effect within the crayon. And especially if you're making it for uh, kids, it's kind of fun to have that surprise pop of color and color changing effect as they're coloring on their page. So now that I have my crayons all pulled out, this one is easy because it is already all peeled. So those are good to go. Um, but you want to take your crayons and you have to remove all the paper from them. So some of them peel fairly easily, like this one's coming away fairly easily. If you get some that are uh, sort of glued to the crayon or a little more difficult to peel, you can always stick them in a bowl of warm water and just soak the paper in it um, for a few minutes and then that really helps it slide off much easier. So I'll put my paper trash over there. Yeah, so you're just going to peel the entire crayon. Oh, and look at that bonus. It slid right off. That's an easy one. <laughs> I always love when I get those. Okay, so then once you have your crayons all peeled, what you're going to do is you're going to take them and my mold is fairly small here, so I don't want big, big chunks of crayon. I'm going to take my crayon and I'm just going to break it into teeny tiny pieces. And I'm going to sort of make a little pile in there of those pieces. And I'm probably only going to get, let me go for my darker blue here. Because these are a little smaller than the ones I'm used to using. And I want to get a white in here as well. So I'm going to take my white and peel a little bit of that too so I can toss that in here. And I won't need much of this because my mold is so tiny. Now you can find these molds uh, in craft stores. You can find them on Amazon. I will try to link a few fun ones that I can find on Amazon because I know they have the sky's the limit in this shape that you can get of these. I've seen robots and dinosaurs and um, I know craft stores I've seen little Lego bricks. You can make Lego uh, shaped crayons. That's always fun. You can do, uh, you know, a set of each color in the rainbow, um, a brick, and then have them, you know, tied together in a little set. That would be a great gift for a kid. Um along with a coloring book or activity book. Um, so I have the mold here all filled up. I don't want to overfill it because it's going to obviously melt down and need room to be in there. Um, so I'm going to continue on with the rest of these, peeling them and breaking them apart and putting them in my mold. And then I will come back and let you know the next steps that we're going to do. Okay, so I have all my crayons peeled and broken and put into molds. I'm making a purple, a yellow, a green, and a blue toned crayon. Um, and mm, it smells like crayons in here. <laughs> um, so what you want to do next is you're going to preheat your oven to 275 degrees Fahrenheit. Once it reaches that temperature, you're going to put your mold in the oven I recommend putting it on a cookie sheet first so it's a little more stable. Um, it's not a problem now, but once your crayons are all melted and you're removing them from the oven, you're going to want a nice uh, sturdy 
base so that the melted crayon wax doesn't slosh all around when you're trying to remove it from the oven. Um, so seven to eight minutes, you're going to kind of keep an eye on it. Um, and because some, I have found that some crayons melt faster than others, depending on the, you know, manufacturer that um, makes the crayons. So you want to wait until they're all melted before you remove it from the oven. And there's no need to stir or anything to get that swirly pattern that you see in this one. That just kind of naturally happens um, as they're in the oven. So you're going to pop them in the oven, seven to eight minutes, keep an eye on them. Uh, and I will show you what they look like as they're in there uh, melting away. Okay, quick update on how we're looking here. So you can see most of the crayons in there are all uh, at the liquid state at this point. Uh, if you look in the yellow one, you can see there's a couple of crayons that are taking a little longer to melt. I'm going to give that a little more time. It won't hurt the other ones, and um, usually the... Uh, holdouts will melt down too. So I'm going to give it a little more time and see if they will melt down as well. If they don't, it's okay. It doesn't bother me that they're still solid in there. It'll still work fine. Okay, so here we are. You can see we've got a bit more of the uh, crayon melted in the yellow now. So I'm going to go with it like that. I'm going to go ahead and remove them and then I will let them sit and cool you're gonna to wanna to let them cool until they're completely solid and cooled before you try to remove them from the mold. If they're even a little bit warm, they'll be too soft and they will bend on you. All right, we are back. I have my uh, coffee here in the hopes that that helps the voice a little bit. And I have my cooled crayons here. Um, they are firm and cool to the touch and it took them about a half an hour to reach this stage. Now that is going to vary a little bit depending on the size and shape of your mold um, and the thickness that you made your crayons. Now I did notice I probably could have added a little bit more of the crayon bits to each mold. They are only uh, maybe halfway full. <laughs> uh, so. This, like I said, the mold I used to use, I had to throw away because it was cracked. Um, so I'm kind of getting to know this mold a little bit and figuring out what my, what, what I can do with it. So you kind of want to pull around the edges and release the top part from the mold. And then you're just going to carefully push from the bottom and kind of pop them out. And it, it's fairly easy to do, really. That's the beauty of the silicone. It's nice and flexible. And there is our yellow heart crayon. All right, so I'm going to work on the purple here. I think it really does help to kind of pull the mold away from the top portion and get that going before you try to release the bottom portion. So we're just gonna let me get this top area pulled away a little bit more. There we go. And then we're just gonna gently push. And there is the purple. And then we'll work on the green here. him out. All right, there we have our green. And you can see how the colors kind of naturally separated away from each other. And that was one thing I didn't mention when I was taking them out of the oven that uh, I always make sure to keep them pretty uh, level and steady and move slowly moving them out because you don't want to swirl your colors together so much that they are they become one you want to be able to see the swirls of color throughout the crayon so you want to kind of keep them steady while they're still liquid um, so as not to mix them too much and then we have I believe this is our blue this 
and there is the blue. And this this mold is not my favorite. I think um, I like the other one a lot better, so I might have to invest in a new one. This was, I think, an old one I had gotten from Ikea or something. Um, not a good quality baking mold, so I might have to look for one of those myself. But there are our colors all out and ready to be used. So I'm going to do the letters with, I'm going to attempt at least to do the letters with my homemade crayons. Uh, but I wanted to work a little bit on some of the truffle trees as well. So I'm going to start with those. And I think the beauty of a Dr. Seuss book is that you can kind of go crazy with your colors. <laughs> um, so I'm going to do... Oh, by the way, I'm using the Starjoy Gold set of pencils here, and I think I'm going to work on a trunk here to start, so we'll just work on one of these. I'm doing a no no, and I didn't I didn't sharpen my Star Joy set when I got it, so it's got kind of a that weird flat tip right now, which I know is not ideal, but that's okay. I'm being a bit lazy today. I'm just going to get a couple of these trunks and do those in yellow. I can't remember what they were in the movie. I have to say the Lorax movie is a, a favorite of mine. I do like, and, and Horton Hears a Who, I like that one a lot as well. If you've never seen it, Fair warning, you will probably get a song or two stuck in your head afterwards. That That is something that always happens to me. Okay, so the tops of the truffle trees, as far as I remember, are sort of almost pastel colored, I think. I know they're not a bold color, so we're going to do sort of lighter. And I think what I'm going to do is try to... Go darker in the tips and then let it get lighter toward the center of the tree just for some variation in tone. So I'm curious, does anyone else celebrate Earth Day? Have you done anything? Will you do anything? I try, I've always tried to be as Earth conscientious as possible. Um, recycled for as long as I can remember and you know I'm conscientious about reusing and uh, the quantity of trash that we're producing and putting out there into the world try to consolidate my trips uh, gas wise which especially now is a good thing because goodness it's just a little expensive otherwise. Anyway, um, when I had babies, I did, uh, much to my husband's dismay, reusable diapers, which is, is, to be fair to him, it's not a fun process, but we did it. Um, yeah, so I've always kind of tried to incorporate that into our lives a little bit. This is apricot here. We'll do an apricot tree. 
Um, and then of course, as I mentioned, we've, I've always tried to do something with the kids for Earth Day. Just so they got that message too, that we should be conscientious of what we're doing to the Earth. Yeah, I think I may have mentioned uh, we have a, well, I live by uh, what used to be lots of rolling farmland at the end of my neighborhood, and it is slowly but surely turning into a giant townhouse development, which, I mean, it's fine. I understand the value of that, but... Um, I, I may have mentioned in another video, I had a, a Lorax moment where uh, they were cutting down a big group of trees that was on one of the farms to start preparing the land for building one day. And I happened to notice out my window this massive flock of birds, like more birds than I've ever seen ever, uh, flying past the house. And I was like, what is going on? And I looked out and I saw those trees falling in the distance and I was like, I was ready, ready to go find a big fuzzy orange costume and go stand on a stump over there and yell, I speak for the trees because, oh, it was so sad. I mean, when you just actually see the wildlife being, you know, chased out of their home. Yeah, it was, uh, that was not a fun day. <laughs> Not a fun day at all, Ugh. but I, I know, you know, it provides homes and jobs and the building of a community and all that. I know there's value to it, but it's hard to see, especially when you really love the, the farmland and the nature around you. Um, as far as the crayons go, I'm going to do this one tree and then I think I will move on to the lettering at least. This probably won't be a super long coloring uh, video just because my voice is a little probably annoying to some today. <laughs> And to be honest, it doesn't exactly feel good to be using either, so I'll probably cut it a little shorter today. Um, but yeah, the idea, I just wanted to, again, it's the coloring outside the book uh, ideas aren't meant to be like this groundbreaking thing that I came up with. And I know I'm not the first one to invent, you know, coloring a Christmas card or uh, making these crayons. Uh, obviously I saw the idea online, um, and then kind of adapted it into my own life and use. Um, so I know I didn't, please know I didn't invent, nor do I think I invented the idea. Uh, but more just that, um, this is a coloring community and, uh, these videos are just kind of like, if you, if you like coloring, you might like this idea. You might like to use it too. And this is how I use it. So, um, hopefully somebody gets, you know, some inspiration from it. Um, summer's coming up. This is a great, the crayon making is a great activity to do with, uh, even very small kids, as long as they're monitored, um, they can help with trying to peel paper and uh, breaking the crayons up. That's excellent fine motor skill development for one thing. Um, but even if they can't manage quite manage that, they can uh, sort the colors into the molds how they like. You can have them try to match colors or um, just let them be creative and make up their own crayons and get to see how they turn out. They love that. And uh, for older kids as well, they can help with the whole process and um, 
you know, have the fun of making and using their own crayons. Um, another thing that I've always had in mind to do, but haven't taken the time to do yet is I think it would be really fun to, uh, make my own set and, you know, kind of tailor the colors and then have them in a clear glass jar as decor in my craft room. Um, I know I'd really like that. So it's been an, on my mind. I just haven't gotten to it, but That'd be another fun thing to do. Even if you don't have kids around to share this with, you can definitely do it yourself and enjoy them on your own too. You're never too old for crayons. And if you are, I refuse to get old. That's just it. That's all there is to it. All right, so I am going to go ahead and... Um, grab my crayons and then we'll work on a little bit of the letters here since I have a few truffle trees colored. All right, I'm going to go ahead and attempt to use my crayons on my book here. Um, like I said, these are not necessarily meant for uh, adult coloring book coloring. <laughs> um, they, they work well enough. Uh, but you're just not going to be able to get into details or anything with these. They're really just for fun. Um, especially for if you have kids in your life to do this with. More abstract coloring is what they're great for. But we're going to use them today for this just because it's Earth Day. Oh, I'm not doing terrible. I thought it would be much worse than this, actually, because there's no good point on these. All right, there's the first one. I'm just going to kind of cycle through my colors here. Yeah, I definitely recommend, though, uh, investing in a good quality silicone mold because even the feel of these crayons, uh, as opposed to the one that I used with my nicer mold, this this has like a shiny, smooth finish, and this is very waxy. Like, uh, that finish didn't come out with the mold, come out of the mold properly. So, yeah. I'm going to have to invest in another one of those because... I would still like to be able to keep doing these. I'm sure I'll figure out reasons to use them. This yellow is a little trickier, especially with the smaller curvy letters. Now, if you don't have a a uh, horde of crayons like I do um, and you'd like to try this project I would recommend looking uh, whenever back to school time happens uh, that's always a good time to pick up crayons at a good really good price so um, you can look for them then and stock up a little bit and then um, you know just use those to make your own crayons Well, it's not necessarily the recycling spirit of things at that point. It is, um, I do think, think these make a fun, unique gift and, um, you know, they're just something fun to do. It's fun to take something and make it your own. Now, I know these letters are going to look uh, kind of choppy and not very well colored in. Um, that's okay, though. I think I think that might look cute, like a, almost like it was crayon written. 
against a page where the rest of it will be colored, you know, a little nicer than with colored pencils. So this was just for fun. There we go. And then I'm going to move down to the T here. We'll use the blue on that. And then I may stop there for today. I do apologize that uh, this one's going to be a little shorter than usual. Well, this is the, that was the, pur the blue I used up there. I must have put a purple in with it because that's very purple looking up there. Um, but anyway, I do apologize that this is going to be a shorter Shorter coloring outside the book than usual. I'm just, um, you know, not feeling the best and I don't want to subject people to my voice for longer than they have to be. Let's see if I can get that in there colored. There we go. All right, there we go. There's the start of the page here. Um, so thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the idea. Um, maybe got a little inspiration from this. Maybe uh, even just a different way that you might celebrate Earth Day today. I had fun doing this for sure. Um, these get these crayons make a wonderful Valentine uh, Christmas gifts. Uh, little school events. They're great to send in, especially now that a lot of schools are restricting food items. These are great to package up and send. Um, they're also wonderful if you can find a Halloween mold shape to pass out to trick-or-treaters. Um, so yeah, there's lots of things you can do with these crayons and they're so fun to make. Um, so highly recommend uh, you trying it out for yourselves. I will try to link some molds that um, would be good to use uh, down below. And thank you so much for watching and joining me. And I hope you have a happy Earth Day today. Bye.